All right, hello YouTube, welcome to video by development per second. And I just wanted to quickly share how I approach including figures into my thesis or journal articles or books or just any of my long documents that have a lot of figures in them. So for example, the context here is let's say you have a thesis. I'm assuming you use LaTeX and the Tix package to make your figures. So have some text here, there'll be chapters, and then some figures will be throughout the document. And an issue that can happen is that compile time can be a long time, or just when you want to make little changes here and there, it can get uh, really cumbersome. Uh, especially if you're remaking the same kind of figure over and over again. So for example, this is a journal article I wrote a while back where I learned most of this stuff. And this kind of figure was made in ticks, and this particular simulation uses a material glass. Sometimes it used a different material, and this is all based off of just a scripted ticks file. So it's pretty easy for each simulation to just remake the figure. You just make the file once, and then I can re-upload, and all this data will change with it. So, for example, for our next journal publication, uh, this figure was using the same code. They ended up changing it, which was perfectly fine because after doing this work, it all just became a matter of recompiling uh, the code, so it was no big deal. Um, yeah, so an example situation, you write your thesis, you come across a figure and say, oh wait, I actually want this line to be blue and I want the data file to change because let's say now you want to have data, uh, data 2. .txt. So instead of going offline, opening you know MATLAB, Python, or whichever environment you're using, uh, you can use Tix and program it right here in the same window and have some nice benefits like the font size stays consistent, so it looks very professional. So let's go to the file, and here we've just put figures chapter one. Here we have a text file that creates the actual plot that you just saw. And this code will be on GitHub if you want to know how to make this uh, cropped uh, PDF. And we said we wanted to use a new data file, data2.txt. So this means look for a data file in the same folder, dot slash. It's going to be in a subfolder called raw data, and it's going to be called data2. And let's say I want to change the color of the line to blue. Recompile. So now it's blue and it's using different data that we wanted. Uh, the one step that just kind of locks in your changes is you have to re-upload it. So the convention I use is this is a PDF with the same file name as the text file. So 02 force profile.txt creates this PDF and then I'm going to save it, upload it, overwrite the original. And then when we go back and compile our thesis, we can see how it looks uh, right away. So now right here, instead of recompiling all the lines of code, it's just calling that PDF image that we made, which is a lot faster, uh, especially so if you use an offline tool. And the line is now blue, and the data it uses is now the new data, and we just made a little change that was uh, relatively painless in terms of time. We can do the same for this. Uh, this is like a picture-based graphic that shows an ocean wave energy converter and just compares its prototype size with its actual size. And let's say we want these to be larger because they're too small. So we can just go to the text file. I can just go to the nodes that they're in and make the scale of them larger. And just let's say we want to put a box around this house right here, which is itself an image that's being included from somewhere else. So we compile. So now model scale, 
those words got larger, full scale, those words got larger, and there's a green box here around just that simple house image that demonstrates uh, the scale of a door to the actual device. So we do the same thing as before, download the PDF. And the step that we use to lock it in is we keep that file name the same as the text name. Upload. And then those changes are now back in. So model scale is larger, full scale is larger. We can go to the caption and say, you know, the house is highlighted in green to show the relative scale. And that's it. I just wanted to share how I include pictures because I struggled for a while about how to best include figures without dealing with really long compile times and organization issues. And I found this um, this method of saving it as a separate PDF and just including it as a picture as the best way. And I hope that works for, uh, for some of you out there. And that's it. I'll see you next time.